How do battery interrupters work anyway? Let's find out. Hey internet, as always, I'm that guy bud. Today we're going to talk about battery interrupters, how they function, their strengths and drawbacks, and how you can make one for yourself or someone who needs one. Battery interrupters are a simple way to add a switch between a power supply and something that will draw power. But in this case, we're simply using the interrupter to replace the power button. This way we can keep the original power button in the on position and make the switch that we add to the system be the actual power button. Most of the battery interrupters on the market do this by putting something that will not conduct electricity, like rubber, paper, or plastic, between the battery and one of its contacts. That something is sandwiched between two things that will conduct electricity. We then wire up some leads and connect it to a jack that we can plug a switch into. The biggest strength of battery interrupters is the ability to make a battery operated item into something that's switch accessible. However, there are plenty of drawbacks. The point where the wires connect to that sandwich tends to be very weak and prone to failure. Just read the reviews of battery interrupters online. And while they can be durable if properly installed, Many people don't take the time to properly install them, especially if someone intends to use the same battery interrupter for many different items, or if the instructions were poorly written. I'm going to go over three ways of making your own battery interrupter. The first one I'm going to show you is based on currently available models. I'll show you a variant of that model, and then I'll show you a different product that may be suitable for some applications for a cheaper and easier solution. Here's a picture of the item we're going to emulate. The list of materials we're going to use for this include a piece of plastic, I'm going to use a takeout container, an eighth inch mono audio extension cable, you could use stereo, just determined which wires on the inside you would need to use, some copper tape, and some solder. The tools we need for the first version are wire cutters, wire strippers, scissors, and a soldering iron. The first thing that I'm going to do is to cut out a piece of plastic. Then I'm going to add copper tape to both sides of the plastic. Now I'm going to cut out this piece into the shape and size that I want. That way I don't need to separately cut out three identical layers. The battery interrupter I'm going to make is suitable for C or D batteries. If you need smaller batteries for your project, just make a smaller circle. It's more about getting it to fit inside the case without shifting around, so don't go too small with the circle if you're using a larger battery. Now that we have our sandwich, I'm going to test it to show that it's cutting the power. I'm just going to slide it into this battery case to cut the power to this LED. Now we know that it works, so let's add the leads. I'm using a Radio Shack mono extension cord because they're really easy to find. I'm going to cut off the end that will act as the receptacle for the switch plug. The good news is that we can save the other end for a DIY switch in the future. Check out our other videos if you want to learn how to make your own switch. First we're going to strip off some insulation, then we'll separate and strip the inner wires. Next, we'll tin the inner wires. Then we'll solder one wire to each side of the sandwich. Keep in mind how the material you're using as an insulator reacts to heat. You don't want to melt any plastic or burn any paper. Okay, it should be ready to go. Let's test it. We'll add it to the battery compartment and plug in the switch. There you go. Now here's where the weak spot comes in. This joint is not strong. The material isn't going to hold up well against being tugged on. A good idea is to add in some strain relief. Maybe you attach the cord to one of the batteries with tape or a zip tie. That way if it does get pulled on, you aren't going to damage the interrupter. If this is going to permanently stay inside this project, maybe you can find a place to hot glue the wire down, but make sure you leave room to remove the batteries. If the project you're working on has an enclosed battery box, you may have to cut out a notch to let the wires out. Don't have a soldering iron? Then try this. It's just like the last one that we showed you. Make your sandwich, trim your cord, Strip the insulation, exposing the wires inside. Now this time, instead of tinning the wires and soldering them, we're going to cut off more of the aluminum tape and tape those wires to the outside of the sandwich. If you can, try to tape a little over the insulation to act as more strain relief. You can never have enough strain relief. And there you go. Now for a third option. This only works if you have a battery box that's connected by a wire but I'm a big fan of it for its simplicity. This is an audio jack terminal block. I love these and I use them in all sorts of projects. Watch how easy this one is. Clip the power wire, the wire that goes to the battery box, and strip the ends. Open the terminal blocks with the screwdriver, put the wires in, and tighten them down. Done. And just plug in a switch. These audio terminal blocks are widely available online. 
And check my store, I'll try to keep some around. That's it for today. If you have suggestions for future videos or questions about this one, you can leave them in the comments below or reach me on Twitter at ThatGuyBud. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time. You can never have enough strain relief. <laughs>